Talk to me a little bit more about the uh, the partnership side, because you know you mentioned that McKinsey, Deloitte, these other large consulting firms, while you, you know could be viewed as competitors to a degree, you're actually partnering with uh, organizations like these. So what does that look like in a little bit more detail? Why, sure. why are you partnering with that type of, of organization? And then how are you actually using that to, to build your business? Sure. Uh, reinvention is an umbrella framework that aims to connect disconnected, often silenced um, functional areas. So in a business, strategists usually don't like operations people and operations people don't like sales and strategists. Then there are people people. This is organizational development, communications, HR. They don't like money or numbers. And all of these people represent very different schools of thought. There is a theory of strategy. There is forecasting. There is innovation. There is uh, design thinking. There's Scrum Agile. There is organizational development. There is leadership. And all of them are misaligned and they do not have... A, a kind of essential focus on value creation. Everyone is focused on whatever their personal preference is. So we most often, how we started collaborating with big houses was not our choice, it was the client choice. So the client would hire the big name for the calculations, forecast, business modeling. But when it comes to getting it done, they would say, hey, they're detached from reality. Sometimes what they propose, you come on the ground, it's undo, like it cannot be implemented. It's just a nice PowerPoint. We need to make sure in the process, you serve as a bridge between the real business and the kind of theoretical frameworking that the big houses usually do. In the past, that was the start. After a while, we actually started liking each other. So I was asked, for example, by Boston Consulting Group, by some of their partners to come back and teach their mid-level principals and consultants and junior consultants some of the things around the change management, around prototyping, around design thinking, around more of this um, nitty-gritty messy part of business growth and transformation and pivoting that is not just something you can do in Excel and put it into a nice PowerPoint. So that's how it started for us. Now we're doing very different things. We are doing blended programs. We are doing, um, uh, the, the, this year, we are testing a lot of kind of Tesla for consulting when we are thinking about creating a platform for consulting where we connect customers and potential providers, and we keep a percentage of the uh, of the revenue of the contract. So we have a couple of tests running right now. So right. now we are going into crazy ideas right, on right, what right. collaboration right. looks like. So I'd love to explore a little bit more about the this idea. Of, so you, you are working with a client. The mm -hmm. client is also working with a large consulting firm, and I, we hear this a lot from from our clients in our coaching program that. Um, you know, they'll often win business or go into working with, with a company because they, they've brought in maybe one of those larger consulting uh, houses, but exactly like you said, it's, it's too high level or, you know, it, it's great on the strategic kind of vision, but the implementation doesn't happen. There's, there's always uh, kind of a, uh, a failure in being able to take what the, you know, those great ideas and, and turn them into reality. So that, that part makes sense, but what would your advice be or, or how do you think about or what are some best practices for navigating that relationship between you being brought in as kind of the, you know, the small guys into an environment where there, you have the client, but then you also have this much larger organization like a McKinsey or, or a BCG or whoever it might be. Any best practices or tips that you found to be helpful in navigating that relationship so that ultimately you can still deliver great value to the client? but you're not you know, kind of stepping on each other's toes uh, or, or having uh, potential you know, confrontations on, on different viewpoints? Mm -hmm. Well, I think part of it is internal work on the mindset shift and part of it is uh, external things around um, just very open discussion on starting assumptions and perimeters and so on. The mindset part is stop thinking of yourself as small. Right now, today, because of the speed of change, we have study after study that shows the past success, the best practice of yesterday, not only can be unuseful today, it can be dangerous. And what those big houses rely on, 
they rely on past successes. I had a very cynical conversation with one of very senior partners. I won't name the company, but I remember they said um, it was a conversation in London. So one of their main offices and the partner said that uh, after a meeting with a client, if we enter the taxi and we don't know which template we're going to use from the past, we don't accept the client. This is the actual quote. So the big houses, and I admire the effort they do. They do a lot of new intellectual work. They are trying to reinvent and you can read their work and respect their work. And you also need to understand what are their strengths and their, what are their weaknesses. Their weaknesses today is unfortunately is reliance, over-reliance on past success. And you have a unique capability to be free from a lot of weight of past success and the brand limitations and a lot of inflexibility that comes with that. So um, I work with my husband, who is also CEO of, a customer, of our company, and he keeps telling me, Nadia, we are only as good as our last score. He, he loves football and it was Super Bowl yesterday. So we're only as good as last score. So it's a great equalization right now. We are all equalized. Uh, big name, small name, we're only as good as our last score. So first and foremost, the mindset should be very clear that there's no better or worse right now. You're only as good as what you can deliver right now. So go ahead and deliver. And that will be louder. Your reputation will be louder than anything you can imagine. Yeah. Then there's, a, of course, a technicalities, which is entering into a conversation. There has to be very clear discussion on the scopes, on the responsibility, on the way of cooperating, and also very clear discussion on how we work. So we actually write a memorandum, and it includes things like, we are very, very kind and gentle to the people and we are ruthless to ideas and decisions. So if you get something from us, know that we are speaking about the ideas and decisions and we love you dearly and don't take it personal. But we will write a common memo that in a very plain language explains when you see this kind of email or text or whatever from me, this is how to interpret it. It's not an attack. It's I'm just being very ruthless to ideas the way I would be ruthless to my ideas. But you as a person is never, never under attack. And, and who do you send that to? Does it go to the client and let's say to the partner or is it only to the client or who, who sees it? Uh, it depends on who is involved in the process. So sometimes if it's a long-term client relationship and I know the client for many years, uh, whether it's a board, the whole board or particular one sponsor, if we have a very long-standing relationship, I don't need to renegotiate anything with them. It is uh, negotiations and it's a document co-created together with a new partner. If it's a whole new situation, then we actually do workshops at the beginning to align. It can be virtual or physical, at this point virtual, but we actually have a workshop to align and make sure that this is very, very transparent and that we speak about it from the beginning. Hey, this is going to happen. It's like a new relationship. We don't know each other. <laughs> we need to figure out who is uh, sleeping on which side of the bed and how the pillows are preferred and blah, blah, all this stuff. And we try to make it humorous and relaxed and so on and not walk around that issue. Be very open that this will happen. This is normal. And this is the way we plan to solve it as we go along. I think that's so important because